Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, today I thought um, we would have a go at doing something a little bit abstracty, maybe. Um, and if you're anything like me, you have this idea that, you know, uh, abstract will be easy, but then when you sit down and you try to do something, it, you can't think of anything. Well, I have that problem all the time. Don't uh, imagine I don't. And so just now I thought, oh, I know. I'll tell you what, I'll use my Kurataki uh, graphite colours for this. That will be interesting. Uh, I thought to myself, well, this is what they look like in the box and they're not very exciting to look at. But when you add water and you paint with them, you get these different shades. And they are, they're quite sort of subtle and kind of um, uh, moody, I think. But I'm not entirely sure, having done that, um, that it's the right time of year for that. So anyway, so I did that and I thought, yeah, more of those circles in rows, more of those blobs in rows with doodles on. And how many times have we seen that? It's boring. So I threw that way. And then I thought, well, you could do this. And this is um, this is a lot more childlike, a lot more naive, I think. And um, I did this the other week when um, I was in a different frame of mind. I'm not in a bad frame of mind or anything like that. Perfectly happy. Um, but, uh, you know, I look at this and I think, how old are you? Six. So anyway, I put that away. Um, not that there's anything wrong with being six. We're all six. Sooner or later, we're all six. Um, so anyway, I had another idea. Um, and what I did was I went um, to a book and I photocopied a sort of random painting. And um, I cut it up. This was, this was a painting here. And I cut it up into pieces like this. I photocopied it, cut it up into pieces. Don't know whose this was, irrelevant, it doesn't matter, could have been a Monet for all I care. So I cut it up into pieces and then I took a photograph of it. It's wonderful this technology, isn't it? And uh, the photograph I took of it produced this, which is not the same at all as the original. I'm just putting this back together again. Uh, where did that go? Um, oh, I don't know. Anyway, it produced that, something like that. And I thought, okay, moving on. So I cut it into four strips like that. And then I took a photograph again. So I cut it up twice and reassembled it twice. And then I've ended up with this, All right? And I'm not going to copy this, but this is not anything, but it's something. And what this does for me is, um, oh God, those circles again. Um, this gives me um, a starting point. And what I always like to have is a starting point. So I'll say, okay, this is my starting point. So now, um, and we'll see what happens really, is basically, so I've got my etcher block of paper here, which is glued all the way around on all four sides so that it doesn't come up and bubble and do, you know, naughty things when you're not wanting it to. So that's that. And then I think I'm going to use, um, oh, I tell you what, I've got a new set of paints and this is a sneak peek. I'm not going to open them up yet, but um, this will make uh, <clears throat> Rubens happy. Uh, Mr. Paul Rubens was a German born artist from about three or 400 years ago, but he is now being used as the brand name for Chinese paints. This is Paul Rubens, Artist's Watercolour. This is their 36 colours set of tether upside down of um, tubes. I've got their um, pan set, but this is 
the next level up in terms of quality. And these are supposedly more strong, supposedly purer, supposedly everything everyone wishes for from a set of watercolors. So I'll be swatching those out and looking at them in a future video, which will be coming soon. So I just thought I would show you that because somebody the other day said, are you only ever, ever, ever going to paint on cure with Kuretake paper paints again? Are you never going to go back to your old paints? And I said, well, yes, I will. I will go back to traditional watercolor um, sometimes, but sometimes this is all you can do is, is go with Kuretake. So I've got my um, Art Nouveau set there because it's in a smaller box and it's easier to manage. Just a second. Put the camera up a bit higher so you can see better. I also am going to splash around a bit with some gold here. So I'll get out uh, this box of paints. This is Coliero. There's a Kuretake one too. You'd think I worked for them, wouldn't you? But I don't. Um, there is a Kuretake one as well, but mine are getting a bit run out. So um, this is Colero, and they come from Germany and they're pretty good, of course, as it would be, wouldn't it? Um, I need my my little syringy thing dropper. And I'll just put some paint, pour water, water in the paint. In case you're wondering why I've got a plaster on my finger, it's because I burnt it on the oven the other day and it's not yet healed and it looks a bit red at the moment because I've put some stuff on it to make it get better and it looks worse now, but it's not worse. It's getting better. It's it's not painful or anything. It's just stupid. I was putting my hands into the oven and, you know, I don't like ovens that have this. We used to have ovens in England. We used to have ovens that had all of the um, electric elements were protected behind metal sheets. Well, nowadays they're all exposed, or at least mine is, and um, I just touched my finger on the element. Ooh, roast pork, lovely. Um, so anyway, let's get started. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what, I think, I know, I know, I know, I know. I will do something along the lines of the curata of the um, brush pens. I've got Kuretake on the brain. Um, let's find a brush pen and we're looking at this and see where the lines go and everything. So I think I'm going to start off by doing some lines. This is not going to work because it's not got any ink in it. Let's try this one. Yeah, okay. So let's put some shapes. We will start off with a circle, but it will be an irregular one. I think it's very important to have something to go along, to go go by, you know. I, I find I get lost and stuck. Not everybody's like that. I know not everybody is like me. Obviously, thank God. <laughs> that would be a wonderful world, wouldn't it? Um, so, yes, let's let's just meander across the paper like this. And we'll do some circles. And this is the opposite, isn't it, to what we did yesterday. What did I do yesterday? I painted two birds on a leaf branch, leafy branch, carefully tracing the design and following a pattern, predetermined, decided upon in the beginning. This is the opposite. This is random elements, random elephants. Anything will go, anything will do. Um, 
So, so I don't know what I'm going to do once I've done this. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I suppose I will paint it. But it's quite nice to use this brush pen because it's um, light, easy to use. Thank goodness the sun has come out at last. And um, the rhododendrons are starting to bud. And next thing we know, we'll have some frost and they'll all lose their flowers like every year. Let's put another circle over here. Not a circle, but a shape, big shape like this. The only problem when the sun comes out is that it shows up all the dust, doesn't it? And the grit, grime and effluent that you've accumulated over the winter. And you think, oh my goodness me, I think I need to do some um, spring cleaning. This could be said to be a like a, a reverse colouring book in reverse. And I'm thinking while I'm doing this, I'm sort of pondering on the idea of what colours to use to colour in my drawing, which I have now finished. So there we are, that's that. And I think I'll use a size seven brush. And maybe maybe I will um, start with, I like this color, I like this blue. So perhaps I'll begin by painting. Can you see? Yes, painting the background. Very relaxing, no pressure. I don't know what's going to come of it, doesn't matter. So I've created myself a coloring page here, you see. And I'm going to colour it in now. So I don't know, I don't know if my husband's going to listen to this, but if he does, he won't be very happy because I'm going to talk about him. So he came back today from having gone to the car wash to wash the car. He'd been once already, he went early in the morning with one cup. We've got two, and they haven't been cleaned for more than a year. And uh so that's terrible, isn't it? But here, but it's so muddy because we live in the countryside. So you don't bother in the winter because what's the point? By the time you got it back to the house, it would be covered in mud again. So anyway, they went to the car wash this morning. He got that done. And then he said, oh, I think I'll go and do some shopping. Um, change colours here. Uh, so he went to the supermarket and... Um, he tried to pay for what he bought and they wouldn't take his card. He's got a card in American dollars and he's got a card in Egyptian pounds because he has money in Egypt and normally, no problem. Today, they wouldn't take the cards. So of course, being a polite chap, he suppressed his anger at the checkout and came home and then exploded because he was so frustrated because, I don't know how he paid in the end, actually. Um, I don't know what he did. He didn't tell me he was too busy having a fit. And next thing I know, he's clutching his chest and going, oh my God, I've got pain in my chest. Um, so I'm like, sit down. <laughs> You're not having a heart attack, are you? And he's like, I don't think so. <sighs> so, yeah. He was very upset. 
I don't think it's a good idea to get that upset. About a credit card, a debit card, do you? So I'm just going through all the nice green colours here that are in this set. And uh, just going along here, happily chuntering away. It's so much easier to paint something like this than it is to paint the birds of yesterday. Um, because you have to concentrate on that, or I do anyway. Whereas with this, um, you don't really, you don't have to concentrate. Because actually you don't want to concentrate, you want things to just go. And you've already saved yourself a lot of trouble by doing the cutting up thing. I'm not a professional artist, but I have read that professional artists who paint um, abstract paintings sometimes start off their work like that by uh, cutting things up and moving them around. It's not collage because you're not sticking them down or anything like that, but it's, uh, I wanted that to be two different colors. I, uh, I nearly did a very interesting course in, in the Bahamas when we were working there. I enrolled in a course class, weekend class, um, on doing collage work. This was before collage really got very popular, actually. This would have been in about 2000 and it was, I think it was the year of the tsunami. Do you remember that big tsunami they had in somewhere in Malaysia or something? I'm not quite sure where it was now, come to think of it. Um, anyway, it was that around about then. And it was going to be really interesting because this lady was quite a groundbreaking sort of artist. And um, she'd come to the Bahamas and I had a friend there who had a lovely studio, very inspiring. Krista, Krista Dunn, her name was. I've just remembered what her name was. Um, and she lived in, uh, well, Lyford Quay, actually, where we were staying. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, anyway, so she'd organised this lady to come and I'd signed up for it and everything, and we we got there, and she was just asking us to write out the checks. And, uh, you know, I don't like parting with money, but um, it was quite funny, really, because I was just in the middle. I just started to write out my check for how much money it was going to cost, and I passed out. I just, like, literally fainted. It must have been the thought of how much money I was spending, I suppose. Everything in the Bahamas is expensive. Um Anyway, it turned out I ended up in hospital, and luckily one of the people who was participating in the course just happened to be a nurse, and uh, she dealt with the whole thing really well, called an ambulance or a doctor or something, and had me carted off. And uh, it was, yeah, I, I, what I had happened was I'm allergic to bananas, and I had bought a muesli loaf from the local health food shop. <laughs> and I'd eaten a slice of it that morning for breakfast. It didn't say on it that it had bananas in it. I didn't think it did. I didn't know any, had no reason to suppose it did. I know better now. Um, anyway, so I'd had a anaphylactic shock attack. So... That was quite a shame because I didn't get to the reason for telling you all of this, whoa, 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 is because I didn't get to do the workshop on collage. So there we are. Things that you miss out on when you are allergic suddenly end up in hospital. It was very good, though, because um, what was good about that, well, nothing really, but it was good in a way because... Well, it, what, what was good was not that, but the fact was that um, I'd found out that I was allergic to bananas when I was living in Canada. And I always say, I've said this before and I'll say it again, when the um, excrement hits the fan, as we say in England, that will be where I'll be headed back to for healthcare, ha ha, because... 
Um, it's the only place where I've ever been where they actually admitted that there is such a thing as an allergy. Because in England, they don't believe in allergies. Do you know that? Well, at least it, there might be some doctors that do, but I have personally never been able to convince anybody of the things that I'm allergic to. And, yeah, so... But in Canada, they told me, oh, yes, no, you're, you are allergic to bananas. Absolutely. That is the reason why you're lying here at death's door. You eat a banana. And I'm like, oh, I've always eaten bananas. I did not know that this was possible. We're talking about 1997 here, by the way. So might be different now. Um, but I, I was in hospital a few weeks, well, last September with a high blood pressure crisis, which I think I caused and brought upon myself by drinking too much water, but that's another story. Um, anyway, they gave me a funny look when I said, oh, I, yes, I'm allergic to a lot of things. It's as if they take it personally, you know. They, sort of, they don't like you to say that you're allergic because they think, oh, well, um, you know, that's kind of not a real illness, is it? I get that feeling. I'm sure there are plenty of doctors who know perfectly well that there are such things as allergies. I just don't happen to have met one. I'm having fun with this. Um, what colour shall I put in there? Shall I, I think a dark green, dark greeny blue. Yes, put that there. And um, when this is dry, I will, I will be coming along with some more gold. That's what's sitting there. <sighs> I wonder if you're noticing as I'm doing this, how some of these paints, when you pick them up, are almost immediately watery. And others, like this one, for example, when you pick it up, it's very opaque. It's almost like gouache. But then when you add more water, it turns into watercolour. So they're very obliging, these paints. And the, the thing is, if, if, it, if it becomes more opaque, then that means that you can paint over the top of other colours with no let or hindrance. And I haven't been mixing the colours, but I probably should. I, I think that probably would be a good idea to just go from one to the next and let them blend on the paper. Just add a darker shade every time I go back to the palette. Um, doesn't matter if it runs. I think it's quite good when it runs. It's not meant to be precise. And the colours, the more light green colours like that. And this one particularly is not quite so opaque. I'm quite interested to see how these um, Paul Rubens colours work out. Um, yeah. I used to only ever use tube colours. I don't like that. We go back to the green. Tube colours, yes. And uh, you remember when I first started the channel, um, I was using, and I still do, the little dishes uh, to mix the paints in. So I might be doing that when I try these ones out. Um, yeah.
Well, doing this, you're going to get a nice lot of um, practice with brushwork. learning your colours in your set because <clears throat> when you buy a new set of paints you obviously have to get familiar with what they can do. Ah, oh, dear. Yes, can you hear the sheep bleating? We've turned them out to grass now and uh, they're still complaining because they're not getting their dinner handed to them on a plate. They have to go and extract it from the garden, well, the field. So every now and again, they, they go and line up by the gate where they used to go to get their evening meal and uh, and they bleat plaintively, forgetting conveniently that they've been grazing all day on the grass. Some of these colours are gorgeous. It's a lovely green. I wouldn't mind a... Oh, I seem to be wearing that colour really, don't I? Should I take a chance and put a bit of purple in? I'm just going to put a little bit of purple in down here and see, see what that does. And then, because as I tend to feel that you can't only have it in one place when you're doing a design, it doesn't matter if it's realistic or um, abstract or whatever you might call this, which possibly doesn't qualify as abstract. It's a little bit more, well, I don't know. Who am I to say? I can't tell. I think over here we need a bit more of this light colour. Go down here to these ones again. Let them run. We're getting there. This is very bold because this is multi, multi colored. Not normally the sort of thing I do. So I don't really know why I'm doing it, but... Um, I don't know. Perhaps it's because of the hay fever. And what's your favourite colour out of all of these? Getting there. What are we going to do here? I think I might have to break that up. I think that better be dark. The dark colours are very good because then you can put white or 
gold or silver or whatever you want to put on on there, can't you? Perhaps. I've gone over the spiral lines because I can always put them back in again. I think probably we want some dark ones over here. Oops. I mean, there's absolutely no way on earth that I would say that this was beautiful. But it's, um, and it does, does that matter though? You see, I don't care. And nor should you, when you do something like this, you just fill in the gaps, fill it all in. And then, okay, we've got Perhaps we might want some yellow over here, maybe. Complementary colour to the purple. And then I think this dark colour, this dark green is fantastic. Ooh, look at that. Find it again. Wow. We've got quite a lot of white lines, spaces in between, which uh, we'll either fill in now with the brush or else we can come along with some ink. So for example, we can go around that Missed that one down there, didn't I? Uh, light blue, I think. Right, so now I'm going to dry it and think about how we're going to go on top. Okay, so it's dry and I'm going to start putting some gold lines on in places. Now we've done we've done things like this before, haven't we? And I think what I quite like to do is where it's run and it's kind of gone fuzzy. You can use the paint to improve the way it looks by just going over the fuzziness. And when there are gaps, you can fill them up with gold. Remember, art is about the process, not the result. There is no result, actually, because a painting is never finished. If you have, well, now, wasn't it? I mean, the, the great, the so-called great masters, people like... Um, Rembrandt and Van Gogh and so on, they never 
they were never really happy with their paintings. They never <coughs> considered them finished. I think the Mona Lisa has got a couple of paintings underneath it, hasn't it? <coughs> Both of which would have been, you know, by your and my standards, masterpieces probably. Although I do sometimes wonder what it is that made those so-called painters so, so-called wonderful. I remember uh, there's a, um, a, what do you call it, a, a museum, a, a, um art museum here um, on the south coast of Brittany where they've got a lot of uh, work by the Impressionists. And I was impressed by the Impressionists when I went down there a while ago, quite a while ago now. They've renovated it and made it all posh. I haven't been there since then. Um, to find that they worked together and they copied one another's work. And they call it influencing. <laughs> you know, Degas influenced Monet, Turner influenced Manet, and so on. So they were they were the archetypal influences, isn't that funny? Hmm. So they copied one another. I don't know whether they actually literally traced each other's work, but they definitely copied one another's ideas. So I don't know if that means anything to anybody. When I'm doing this kind of thing, I don't uh, look at the overall picture at all, if you can call it a picture. I just um, paint and I just, I just wait until I got to the end and then I look at it and think, yeah. <laughs> No, doesn't matter. Don't forget that we've got the challenge on the Facebook page. If you're a member of... Um, either the YouTube membership, uh, not YouTube, uh, what do they call it, Prime or whatever they call it. I don't mean that. I mean, each channel has its own membership and you can join, you can find a button that says join on the, on the, on the, on our homepage on YouTube. And if you click on that, that button, it'll give you details of what that means to join. And um, it doesn't commit you to anything at that point. You haven't, you haven't signed away your firstborn child or anything. Um, anyway, if you're a member of that, or if you're a member of our patron, Patreon, um, membership, you can join the private Facebook group and we run a, a daily challenge on there where I give you some extra input. So, for example, today is a sketch. I, I put up this month. It's a sketch that I do every morning when I first go to the studio. I usually paint something or draw something. And so I'm sharing that with you so that you can make it yours. And the hashtag make it yours is what you can put on it and then you can share it to the group and everyone will go oh that's lovely and I'll go hmm that's much better than mine um <laughs> which is more than possible 
anyway, some of you are producing, all of you are producing lovely work. Some of you are producing amazing work. Some of you have made tremendous strides, improved enormously. It's quite fantastic. Okay, so not fond of this banana down here. That's because I was talking about bananas. Look what I did. I need to cover that up, don't like that. Okay, now we better leave that to dry. Oh, I think I've got another line up there. Okay, let's let that dry. Right, so I have my white pen and my gold pen here and uh, probably I might need a black one. So there's 0.5 brown and a 0.5 black. Um, so yeah, so now let's do some, let's put some white on here, shall we? Um, this is a hybrid gel by Pentel, Pentel Hybrid Gel DX. I think it works a bit better than the previous ones that I was using, which were the Uniball, but they're okay. And I'm just going to do some white lines wherever it, wherever the fancy takes me, really. You can fill in spaces like this with circles or irregular circles. And as you do it, things will occur to you. So you'll sort of think, oh, if I spaced that out at one end, that would look okay. And then you think, oh, this is very dark up here, isn't it? This would be quite nice. I could do a, I could do a leaf pattern here. Don't know if that would work, but you could put some little leafy things growing in here. And then you think, oh, I'll take it around here too. Leaves everywhere. And you might say, well, I didn't like that much. Or you might say, oh, yeah, I do. It's actually okay. If you don't like it, you know what you can do, don't you? You can lift it out. So, for example, that one there. I didn't like that one there. Just do that. And it's gone. Bob's your uncle again. Did you have an Uncle Bob? Uh, I think I might put some black here on this one. This shape here could well be enhanced. I'm no expert at this. Don't imagine that I am. I don't know what I'm doing. Like everyone else on the planet at the moment, nobody knows what they're doing. You noticed that. We always used to be able to rely on the bureaucracy in England. You used to know that if you phoned the uh, Inland Revenue, that they would be able to tell you everything you needed. And this, I mean, is recent, you know, up until last, last year, really. You could guarantee that they would know the answer to your question. Do you know what the girl on the HMRC, Her Majesty's Royal uh, Tax, uh, we take your money, we will, we will take all your money. Um, well, yes, but how do I fill in this form, you say? 
Um, what's, what do I have to do in order to pay you this money? And the girl at the other end, who is working and being paid to do her job, says, oh, I tell you what, um, what I always do, she said, the girl who works for the government, I Google it. I, I Google it. I look on Google and usually I can find out the answer to your question for you by Googling it. I'm not going to make any comment. Seriously, that is what happened. Uh, yeah, so there we are. Anyway, um, quite like that. You can do all sorts of things. They're fighting in Paris and actually all around France at the moment. They're getting very uppity and I don't blame them. The government of this country is absolutely unbelievable, as corrupt as Italy. And that is saying something. Probably shouldn't talk about politics. I'm not talking about politics, really, am I? I'm not talking about politics. I'm just talking about life. Oh yeah, here's another example, you see, life. It often comes back to my husband. He's the only one in the family who bothers to try to make things happen. He's got um, a problem. Yes, just then be quiet with um, his feet. And that's what happens when you get old, isn't it? So he went to the doctor. Doctor said, okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Those black purplish marks, those what look like blood blisters, those pains and sharp, uh, what do you call them, sharp, um, pains <laughs> are not normal, so you better go and see uh, a, an expert in circulation. So he said, you can phone this, this person. And uh, so we phoned this person and the doctor, the doctor said on a recording, he said, um, not here, um, you have to phone back next Tuesday week between 9 and 10 in the morning. So 11 days later, we phoned at nine o'clock and after dialing the number probably a hundred times, we finally got through to his machine and <clears throat> I left a message and said, we need an appointment and they sent us an appointment for six weeks hence. So six weeks later, he went for the appointment, went to the address sat down in an empty waiting room, no receptionist, nobody there, no, nobody there at all, waited for the appointed time to come. Nobody there, no doctor, no receptionist, no other patients, nothing. Waited for an hour and left. In all my 69 years, I have never experienced anything like that before. Have you? Maybe you have. I haven't. Hey, her. So he can't go back to the same place because he's got to go abroad in a couple of weeks. And by the time he got another appointment, um, it would be too late. So he'll have to take his black spotted feet with him. to Cairo and see whether he can find a doctor in Cairo that will look at him. Um, I don't really like the white very much, but I think probably what I need to do is use more of it. I think it looks kind of out of place because there's not enough of it, and I tend to get carried away with the gold, as you might have noticed.
Well, this could go on forever, couldn't it? So I don't know if you want to watch me do this forever. I just need to think of lots of things to say. That's the only problem, isn't it? Um, what should I do here? What about some leaves? I got a jelly plate the other day, only a little one, about six inches square, and I'm very excited by that. It's fantastic. I really enjoyed that. I have only practiced with it twice, but um, have you tried them? If you haven't, I can recommend it. If you don't, well, I mean, it's it's fun. It's easy. I didn't think it would be so easy. And, but you have to use, really, you need to use acrylic paint. Um, you can use uh, watercolour, but I think that's a bit more specialised. I think it's easier to start with um, if you use um, acrylic. And I happen to have some acrylic paint, so I didn't have to invest in anything except the plate itself. And um, yeah, it's really quite interesting. I was wondering whether to, um, you know, um, um, show, well, you could use it as background. You could, you could do backgrounds for watercolor. That's what I'm trying to say. Brain on strike. I think I'm getting to the point of no return. The final answer. We may have done enough here. Um, we haven't got any flowers, have we? We need a few flowers, don't we? I think it's probably quite a good idea to try to cover up the white where you've missed um, missed it, missed covering up the paper, if you can. I think it helps. So keep your eyes out for eyes open for a um, uh, Paul Rubens evaluation video next week. Um, just have to figure out how to do it. This is called mark making, by the way, apparently. I suppose that makes sense, doesn't it? I am making marks. And I think I'm getting to the point where I've made enough marks. Some of the grey lines are still showing through, like here, which is quite nice. And here, and uh, so on and so forth. Most of them I've obliterated. I'll just put something here because 
like I said, you need to cover up your fault lines, and I could probably call that a fault. So let's make it look a bit like um, Herman Munster. Scar, you know. Yeah, well, I tell you what, I'm going to call that a day. I am. I'm not going to do any more. That's it. Finished. All done. Don't know what you think about that, but it was a nice way to spend an afternoon. And uh, give it a try. And don't forget, you know, cut up the painting and rearrange it. And uh, that's where you start for your abstract. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you again soon. So bye, everybody. Bye-bye.